Main man for next season. We're hearing stories about Tadebo attracting attention from Atleti. Willing to break the bank. That's scrolling across the bottom of your screen right now, everybody. That's the news there that's just come out from the Spain side of things. United need to move fast with targets. Or is this clog up of centre-backs and Edward at the football club going to really get in the way of what Ineos really wants to do this summer? We're going to discuss the defensive side of things. Varane and Maguire out. I've got Jay here with me. I don't think he's too fussed about any of them names leaving the football club right now. But we're going to discuss everything, what has passed and what's coming up. And obviously the headlines today. This is for Every Night TV. I'm Adam. Welcome along, everybody. And Jay, hello, my friend. Are we doing good? Adam, can I just open the show and say two words? Adam Madrid. Yes. <laughs> I tell you what, did you see the viral clip going around about the Madrid fan talking outside about how poor the City fans were? And they don't how they don't appreciate the team that they have got. I've, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's doing the rounds, mate. Just go on social media and look at Real Madrid okay. fan going in on the uh, City uh, fans. Like it's embarrassing for them, but bang on the money. So if you haven't seen it, guys, let me know if you have in the comments as well, guys. But obviously, if you haven't, just go and search it up. Cas showed me before. I didn't see it until she showed me. But yeah, it is absolutely brilliant. And you know what? Like I said, like exactly how it really is. But yeah, United. Uh, well, we've had a week off Champions League. We just sat there and cried at the quality of football that we've watched, knowing that we're nowhere near it yet. So looking ahead to actual plans again, obviously the semi-final this weekend. But I mean, first of all, Jay, uh, going into this weekend, we know the normal protagonists are going to be in the, uh, in the team. We know who's going to be playing. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, the biggest thing about this weekend for me that I looked at, Jay, was uh, Mr. Sir Jim Radcliffe himself running the London Marathon before he actually gets to Wembley. I thought, credit to you at 71, mate. Yes, yeah, so I, I, if I'm still even training at 71, I'd be happy. <laughs> Let alone yeah, run, like, running like running a marathon. <laughs> yeah, fair use, Jim. Big, big up, yeah. Big up, Mr. Jim. Big up. <laughs> but I mean, right, getting into the centre-back situation, uh, Jay, we'll look at the game ahead this week in a bit, uh, this weekend a little bit later in the show, but uh, right now we're hearing reports that Manchester United, as it stands at the moment, this coming from the Muppeteers, credible account as everybody knows. Uh, inside the United's in the house as well, who gives us a lot of inside info. Welcome along, mate. Good to have you win. And hello to everyone else as well. Sorry, I didn't forget you all. Uh, I was just <laughs> excited when Jay said Al Madrid again. It, just, it took me back to last night. But... Uh, Lindelof looks like he's going to be the one that stays now all of a sudden, Jay. He's had that one-year trigger. I mean, I was told that that was because United were going to sell him in the summer, but it now looks like the favourite two to go are actually Harry Maguire and Rafael Varane. Now, a lot of people won't be bothered about Harry Maguire, but to be honest, Jay, if I'm picking for Maguire and Lindelof, there's only one player I'm picking there. Like, I'd, I'd, rather, have, I'd rather have Maguire in my team, but, I mean, for you... I know you've got your opinions on Lindelof like I have. Can you understand it, first of all, and where you're at with, actually, Lindelof over Maguire? I, I think it's because they reckon they get money for uh, Maguire. That, that's why. Like, it's got to be a decent bid, that, though, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, what? What, they probably get 25, 30 for Harry. They paid 80. So most, they've yeah. got now, what, three years out of him? Uh, again... We can go through Harry's career at United. I don't think it's worth doing tonight, but I think if the brass tags are, it's a who can we get money for? And they know Harry Maguire, English, would play the European Championships. If he has a good Euros, Adam, he could go for 30, 35 mil. So I think it's simply um, basic finance. Who's the better player between Lindelof and Maguire? That's that's very debatable. Um, it's I think it's purely finances, plain and simple. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I look at, Lindelof and I go weak, I go slow, I go excuses, cannot pass the ball, uh, like he's hit the odd good long diagonal every now and then, but I, I just look at him and I look at his face and he's always got that excuse on him. And let's be honest, like he's been here a lot longer than a lot of players in that current squad, Jay. For me, I just look at him and go, he's like he's been part of the failure, which has been Manchester United, like seriously. Like, just let it go now. Let it go. If this, I said this this morning regarding the forwards, like... If this last couple of weeks of Champions League football and the standard that we are a country mile away from is where we need to get to, then keeping Victor Lindelof in your team is not going to make any ground up on them teams that are competing in the Champions League. Like Madrid last night and the job they did on City, yeah, it wasn't pretty, but 
class players all over the pitch willing to fight and change the way they play just to get through and win a trophy, the mentality alone is something that these players can only dream of, Jay. Yeah, so we'll touch on the mentality issue first. We discussed many, many times the mentality, the weak mentality that's festering through that squad. And that's testament to the manager for me. Then compare that last night to um, the Wario Fox, Karen Gelati. Um, the, goal, the goal got up, excellent goal by Vinicius. And I wouldn't say they parked the bus, but they're saying, right, guys, come attack us if you're hard enough. And had Rudiger not not uh, messed up for the equaliser, City uh, City would have lost that game 1-0. City better team in extra time, maybe it. But Karen Gelati, his philosophy didn't change because he knew his players are going to fight to the last whistle. And every man in that pitch will not let me down. And even um, he had took off Cruz on Baran Modric. I think it was 70 odd minutes gone. Like he could replace Tony Cruz with Modric. That's the kind of substitution, Adam, everybody watching, that we dream of, that we haven't been doing in years. Mm. Replace a world class player with another world class player. And I tweeted, come at the hour, come at the Modric. And unfortunately for, for Luca, he missed that penalty. But you can see in, in the huddle when he does the penalty, no, head, no heads were dropping because those no. players firmly believed. We're getting to the next round, no matter what, but hook by a crook. So it goes back to what we've always said. It's a mentality issue. And Real Madrid last night came to Manchester, and they believed in themselves they were going to win. And okay, it was penalties. People would say, oh, they're lucky. They weren't lucky. It was mentality. And they're that one cut above City, I think, last night when it came to mentality. So if they're one cut above City for mentality, there must be 20 cuts above us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely say. I was going to say what number you were going to pick out then for being above us, but I think 20 sums it up nicely. Uh, half of that is 10, and that's the amount of memberships just donated by MDRN Samurai uh, Legend that you are, mate. I think Kaz has just been telling you there in the chat about our conversation with Ali before on TIFO from last night. Uh, <laughs> you've got legendary status on the channel now. He's donated 10. Then I've gone to our man inside the United. Welcome to the Members Club, bud. Uh, <clears throat> Sapico, uh, Vasan, Rore, Mo, Kestra, Lawrence, uh, Wagapitol, Wagapitol, oh, a new one, and then uh, MC Mahaja, I think that uh, AC Mahaja, I think that is, and Anthony, Anthony himself. Uh, welcome to the Members Club, everybody. Make sure that you are tuned in to the Members Community Post and extra videos as well on the channel. All extra information is always in the descriptions on them post and in them videos so make sure you tuned in fully and make sure you do please give mdrm samurai a thank you in the comment section guys please give the video a like and make sure you are subscribing to the channel everybody me and jay are here talking over manchester united i do you know what jay i, I how far would you go to saying this is a bit of a defensive crisis for manchester united because mm. i was talking this morning willie Cambuala has not got a year extension trigger in his contract and this summer He's out of contract, mate. Evans, out of contract. Maguire, Lindelof, one year left to go. Varane, out of contract. Tadebo, looking like top target for Atleta, who have got Champions League next season, no doubt, and are willing to break the bank, quote-unquote, for him as well. When does it start to look a little bit concerning for you? Because I'm not seeing anyone jumping to try and keep any players, and some would say that's a good thing, Jay, but... Like you've got to be able to actually field the defence. So based on that analysis there, Adam, we are left with one quote-unquote senior centre-back, which is Martinez. Are you worried about fair, injury Adam, wise? Martinez, I'm very worried about injury record. Very, very worried. And would you class Victor Lindelof as a backup for Martinez? Absolutely not. Varane, then, on the other hand, obviously, he's on massive money, 300 bags a week. And I was reading today that um, Brissy Dor but Bayern Munich, sorry, um, are looking at him, and possibly Spurs. So he's been, I would argue, our best centre-back this season. It's been a season where he hasn't been injured. He's been, I think he's the most head of clearances uh, in the Premiership. Yeah, Someone in the awesome. chat would correct me on that. And we're prepared to let him go. The only reason I think to go let him go is, again, it's um, it's uh, we use the phrase many times the gearsonomics. Surely, if he's 29, he's got two years left at top level, he's not ready to go to Saudi Arabia or MLS. 
uh, sure logic would dictate stick him on a three year contract. He plays two, then in three years' time, sorry, two years' time, he's got a year left and sell him for 15, 20 million, make money off him. Then you've recouped the wages. Now, that seems like fairly basic analysis, and it is basic analysis, but the money in our club, they see the one number, they see the big number of 300,000 um, per week. That's grand. Get rid of uh, Varan. Get rid of um, Maguire. Sure, but who are you left with? And Woody Kambala again, development player, uh, out of contract. Surely he's worth giving him a punt for a three-year contract. Surely based on what he's done so far. Mm-hmm. So in defensive crisis, Adam, you summed it up there. So if hypothetically speaking, Woody doesn't get a contract, we lose Maguire and Varan. We're left with injury pro Martinez, uh, weak. Lack of physical Lindelof, Evans gone. That's two centre backs. We have to buy three centre backs. I would argue you need five centre backs. Let's be fair. I think we need five centre backs. So we're left with two to, to buy three. We're not going to make. We're not going to buy three centre backs. So we're already in April of the end of the season, and already we're discussing an impending offensive crisis for this time next year. Now. Sir Jim and um, Dave Braceford, we did come into the club with this major publicity and football operations been Sir Jim's bag. But if this happens, you question Sir Jim and his running of football operations. Mm, yeah, I, don't, you, I, I cannot say, this is what I said before, I think the scramble right now for getting Ashworth over the line, getting him in situ, getting him in place for his job and his role to start as soon as possible. So Jim Radcliffe having face-to-face talks with Amanda Stavely, trying to get this done. I think I can understand why that's happening now. I think like like the seriousness of the situation is sitting home right now and everybody has been kicked out of United. That's great. That's fantastic. Everyone's happy about that. But like you do need to have a plan in place and be ready for the summer that's coming because if you do get caught short, someone else is going to come and take these players and these targets that you want and you're going to end up being with the same players again because I don't think any of us are the panic buyers that Manchester United have been in yesteryear. I don't think they're going to go out and just find the next thing. I don't think we're going to go and overpay for a Casemiro because we didn't get Frankie de Jong situation. That's not going to happen under any of us. They'll wait. But I keep saying it. I keep going back to the same thing, Jay. Like, three years. That's what Jim said. Like, you cannot get off to a start like this if you're looking to turn it around in three years. The fans are going to turn and things are going to get very difficult for them. And I just look at the situation and like people will say, yeah, yeah, it's, it'll be sorted out, it'll be sorted out. But the reality is like we have got like three quarters of our defence on its last year of its contract. And without anyone else coming in, we're going to be stuck with them, knowing that they're not going to stay at Manchester United next season after next season. And where are their heads at? Like, what have they got to play for if they know that they're leaving the following season? Like, and you're up against it instantly. The only way is get the players in, spend the money, then get rid. Like, get rid of the players. Like, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, Vince, uh, Prince, sorry, with the super chat says, guys, would you take Unai Emery at Manchester United? Jay, I'll come to you on that one. That was a super chat in there from Prince. Straight out, would you take Unai? Based on this season, okay, so the English press, um, very jingoistic um, and negative towards any foreign manager comes in. Yeah, Emery had a disaster at Arsenal, went away to Villarreal, won um, the uh, Europa League and comes back and he literally in two seasons, Villa are revolutionised to the point where they could, they could make chance of football. So would I take Unai Emery over Ten Hag right now in a heartbeat, i bite your hand off. Great question. Yeah, uh, Malu in the chat says I'm going to come to the chat for a bit now guys on these potential signings and what you think we could do uh, who is more important to you I've got a poll up as well for Harry Maguire's worth uh, if you want to get involved in that as well 10, 20, 30 or more in the millions brackets uh, let me know what you think guys get voting on that poll Malu says Evan Ferguson is being seriously discussed internally at Manchester United Benjamin Sesko who has a 50 million release clause is also possibly for United uh, that's more news coming out regarding players I mean Jay just going into uh, the news right now to Debo to Atleti you can see why that's going to happen you can see why they would be interested in that but I uh, just wanted to touch on you, touch base with you regarding Benjamin Shesko. Is that 
the type of Man United striker that we need to be looking at to come in? <clears throat> Look at Wurling to Tesco, we've been linked um, to your man Ivan Tony. Um, Sesco, I, Ivan Tony, I personally made it, I don't have a preference, but what I do want is a proven player that's going to score 20 goals plus per season to be there with, with Hoyland. Um, we repeat this mistake of this season and have just one striker, one upcoming striker, but then flip it around, Adam, no matter who comes in, I don't think they're going to fit Ten Hag football playing with inverted wingers. So you hire a, a striker, you cannot play with inverted wingers. So the problem goes a lot deeper, Adam, um, and everybody watching the chat, than just hiring um, a twenty-plus goal season striker. You do, you don't give a you don't give a striker service, a fox in the box kind of striker. He, he's going to look shy. Mm -hmm. So it go it goes it goes back to Ten Hag's philosophy. Yeah, like I'd argue, Adam, you could you could bring in um, Prime Ibrahimovic, and Prime and Ibrahimovic, yeah, he lived on service early in his career. As he got older. When he played for us, you saw him cut, coming really deep into midfield, demanding the ball because Jose's tactics played played so deep. So a striker, no matter who they are, Ibra or whoever we're talking about, unless they're getting service, they're on a hiding to nothing. So we can talk about Sesco, we can talk about Ivan Tony, uh, talk even talk about Ben um, Osman, unless unless they're getting service, we're, we're wasting our time. This is it. Let's speak. What I said though is this morning regarding the strikers, and my point was: look, we cannot just not go for any particular player because he doesn't suit the way that the manager is going to play or we're thinking that he's not going to otherwise we'll end up with what we've got now and make excuses uh, I just feel like get the players in that you know are going to fit I, I, this is what I feel like I don't think Ineos wants to jump the gun with Eric Ten Hag and end up with a worse manager but one thing you can say is like Ineos will pick a man that they know can play that style of football that they want to play and I think that's where it's pushing Ten Hag more, Ten Hag out more than anything. Like at the moment, Manchester United are PR in Ten Hag to the max. Like just today, with his great work that he's doing, uh, you've seen the pictures of him taking young lad Alfie around Carrington. He's been in praising all the under eighteen lads. Like the PR from United at the moment is all on the good that Ten Hag is. It's like. Yeah, it's great, but if we lose the semi-final, <laughs> it really counts for nothing. We've got nice people at United who can do plenty of good charity work as well, but at the end of the day, it's a results game. If Man United don't buy these players because we think they're not going to suit, I don't think we're going to end up with anyone. I think, like, if Ineos don't jump the gun and Ten Hag is in situ next season, it's not going well. I can see him gone before Christmas. That's how I see it sort of turning around. And then at least you've got the players in, Jay. And you can do something because, like I said, we are going to lose quite a lot of players this summer as well. And you need to give a new manager something to work with. But I think Ineos just need to go out and buy the players that they think is going to suit how they want to play. Ten Hag does not fall in line. See you later, sell a VJ. I think it has to be the basis on the style of football that we have to work on our transfers. That's a great point. Uh, we've been discussing the style of football on together on many shows for years, and <coughs> I still can't see after two seasons a clearly defined disturbance style of football with Ten Hag. So, what I'm saying there is, um, Eric, uh, we're we're buying five players. You play this style of football, or it's curtains. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think do you think um, that would be the conversation? Oh, it has to be, mate. Just bear like... in mind, yeah. Because look at Ten Hag came in, um, so he's in his contract, and I think it's more documented that he originally had final veto over players. Where it's been proven, Eric, that um, you're a very bad judge of a player. So now, ten, uh, now he's, he's got he has to be told by Ineos if you, you have your job um, come um, the off season, you're playing this style of football. These are your players, Eric, make it work. Do you think then, if that's presented to him, Eric Ten Hag would think, "Well, I'm just not the country I signed. Um, I'm out of here." Again, something to ponder. <clears throat> yeah, I, I feel like what Ten Hag said in his embargoed version of the press conference was very, very interesting. After the before the Bournemouth game, sorry for me, Jay, which was along the lines of like, "Look, if 
Uh, if we have to change things up, uh, I have my options. If Ineos think they have better options, I have to listen to them. Like, this is the man that was saying that he needed the last say and was in full control of transfers when he took the job. And that's why he took the job, because it would have been a no-go. So straight away, right now, I know that Ten Hag is definitely changing tact. He's definitely looking at it a different one. He's clinging on to his job, uh, essentially, is what Ten Hag is doing right now. I mean, for me, Jay, a straight-out question. Like, if he loses to Coventry at weekend, is he gone? I think Adam, he has to be. I think mm. um, losing to Coventry, um, I said we spoke off air, Coventry have a combined wage bill of 190 grand a week. Their highest earner is on 30 grand a week. He loses to a team. Now, I don't want to disparage Coventry. Coventry beat Wolves because they could get to the semi-final. And um, I'm sure on Sunday they'd award the opponents, but... That being said, if the cup's name fine, he loses to Coventry. Um, I think you've got to be sacked um, there and then. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people will be calling for it. Like I, I don't want to be Ten Hag in that press conference after losing to Coventry. I don't think we will. I think we will win the game. I'm confident we will win the game, and he will move on. Uh, it will be. It will be a. I think it will be a tough week for Ten Hag going ahead. Like. Three championship sides in a row, like Coventry, Sheffield United and Burnley. Like Wembley, Old Trafford, Old Trafford. He gets through this week with three wins or everyone's pretty much saying, you're finished, you're done. Like, if you don't pick up them, then I think after that week, by the time we finish with Burnley, I think it probably will be close to being mathematically <coughs> impossible to qualify for the Champions League. And we know that's been a big trigger a lot of the time for managers at Manchester United. It has bought... <clears throat> this week is massive for Ten Hag because everyone expects him to win every single game. Like, the home form, you'd expect us to beat Burnley and Sheffield United. Not saying the home form is great, but you'd expect United to definitely have enough for Sheffield United and Burnley. Like, Coventry at Wembley, I think the occasion will be too much for Coventry. Uh, and if he doesn't come out with maximum, Jay, then it's, it is near enough season over, isn't it? It's... There's no way back from it. I think everyone's concern is, is like, do we want another interim coming in? Uh, is it is it worth bringing an interim manager? It just adds to the chaos. And for what I feel, Jay, and I want to get your opinion on this now, is that Ineos still don't have a replacement for Ten Hag. Okay, so I'm going to say this very clearly. This is the second time this season Ten Hag has had low-hanging fruit. His first time was Champions League, Adam. That group, if ever the group in Champions League where a United manager had low hanging fruit, that you're going to assume we're going to be minimum second, we finish bottom. For me, you should have gone then. And I, and I, I say it now. And now it's three games, low hanging fruit, three wins. It's three wins, Mr. Ten Hag, or you got to go. Plain and simple. Yeah. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Everyone in the chat is saying the same thing. Uh, Paulson Sport Clip says, Exactly, Adam. If Ten Hag don't win on <coughs> Sunday, you have to sack him on the spot. Uh, the best we can do is finish six and win the FA Cup. Both equal Europa, says Sadzak. We do need a form of European football next season, I feel. Like it has to be. There has to be some sort of appeal to players coming in. And yeah, I'm Samurai, the green sheet is a good replacement for Eric Ten Hag. <laughs> it's good enough to cover anyone, mate. This one, it's that big. <laughs> and if it wasn't uh, for keeper mistakes, so it's the manager has no control, uh, but we could. Uh, we would, sorry. I mean, Dan, I don't know what you're saying there, like, but in them games in the Champions League, we were, I think, we were, right in thinking we gave up the lead several times. In, in what was it now? So I think it was three of the games we gave up the lead. Like we lost the lead. We lost the lead. We lost a two goal lead twice in Copenhagen, which is unthinkable. Uh, it really is. <clears throat> Are we clinging on? And uh, let's be honest, if Anana didn't make the save against Copenhagen, then we would have dropped more points and already been out. So it works both ways in a way, I feel. And like, we cannot just talk about goalkeeping mistakes to save our manager's. Uh, career, we really can't. It's it's past that for me. I feel like going out poorly against Newcastle as well in the Carabao Cup. I think that's going to add to it as well. Like the goal difference, not being able to score goals, not being able to have a style of play that suits a striker that you bought in. 
Let's not forget the winger that you also brought in for more money than that striker. You cannot fit in the team and he's supposed to be the one that's providing them assists for the striker. And let's not forget Anthony's unstoppable in Eric Tenag's words as well. Honest Tiger with a donated super chat. That's gone to Paul Malpus. Welcome to the Members Club and thank you, Honest Tiger. Over 500 in the room with us, guys. Please give the video a like and please subscribe to the channel as well if you are just tuning in. I'm going to come to the comments section uh, in a second as well. So make sure you get your comments in or any questions uh, that you've got for me or Jay. Uh, just through a few of them now, actually. I'm going to get in... Everyone is entitled to an opinion. Doesn't make um, more or less uh, of a fan, mate. Uh, people are arguing now. I knew this debate would get everyone going. A lot of stuff uh, we are talking about. Most are just rumours. Yeah, a lot of them is. A lot of them are rumours. But there are a lot of facts involved in this as well. And I think the facts, Jay, have just been rolled out by both of us. Poor in the Champions League. Poor in the league. Poor in the Carabao Cup. The FA Cup is all that's left. So that is like the saviour to the season right now. Yeah, like Adam and I are here giving our honest, true opinion. And we see you all in the live chat giving your honest, true opinion. That's what this whole channel is about. We want to hear exactly what you got to say. And we debate among ourselves. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Uh, some of you in the chat there, you're Ten Hag in. That's fair enough. But uh, we're all here to give our opinions, and um, that's just how it is. And we had been poor in Champions League. Like, give, give you one step, Champions League. Galatasaray beating us at Old Trafford. It's the mm. first time a Turkish club had won in England in European football. Let that one sit with you. And it was the same night that um, our club decided to put the Turkish fans in um, seating yeah. in between United fans. Yeah. So that's where the club is. <laughs> that the club didn't even have decency to house the Turkish fans in a section away from United fans. They sold was it season tickets, season tickets that weren't taken up for the game, to Turkish fans. That's the level of administration in that club. And we lose, we lose to Galatasaray at home and fans get abused by Turkish fans in Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. But the media didn't, didn't, didn't want to discuss that. And that is the level guys where our club is. So, in my opinion, Ten Hag should have went when he could not get out of an easy, easy group in Champions League. As I said, that was low-hanging fruit. You got three more games, low-hanging fruit. And if he doesn't pluck that low-hanging fruit, three apples hanging there from the branch, pluck three, or Eric, get out. It's very simple. And discreet me, guys. That's okay. But that's what we're here. We're here to discuss our opinions, right or wrong. Yeah, that is exactly it. Small people... Going in, I think this is like opened up opportunities for people to bring up other players. So we mentioned and talking about Victor Lindelof right now and Harry Maguire and players like this, but then everyone automatically, because it's been so bad, goes to well, what about Scott McTominay? Uh, Gabriel Rock says next thing with McShite when we win the ball back, he sprints forwards in Highland Space or Rashford, our Rashford area, uh, and then. Those guys have no room to play. It's like the guy uh, be hiding from receiving the ball. I mean, again, Jay, it's like I think everyone's got a problem with every single player in this team. I would probably uh, take out Kobe Mainu as the only player that's not really coming for heavy criticism this season for one reason or another. Like, that's where we're at right now. This fan base, Jay, I don't think we'd lose sleep if any player in this team left. I think Kobe Mainu, yeah. You could argue possibly Garnacho, but I don't think anyone loses sleep or is really concerned about any one player in particular in this team. Yeah, and that's sad. I think it's the most dislikable bunch of players that we've had as club for many, many years. And we've had some woeful squads since um, Fergie left. But as you point out there, take Manu Garnacho out. The jury's out in every single player. And I include I include Bruno in that. Mm -hmm. I think Bruno's a stat patter. And again, that's my opinion on Bruno. Some people in the chat might, might love Bruno, and, and that's fair. If Bruno runs around like all day and gets loaded for his work rate. But the amount of unnecessary running he does down blind alleys where he's not actually tracking anybody, he's not pressing, he's just doing his Bruno head as chicken. And I said three years ago, I think maybe four years ago now, can Bruno play with a manager where he's got to be a cog, literally in a wheel, and play to a system. And the jury's out on him as well. So 
we, down the years, we've all had our, our favorite players or players that we didn't like. But in the current squad, there's, there's players, it's a consensus of if five fans agree on, yeah, I like him, I'll have him. And we're left with two young kids in, in Menu and Ganacho. The rest of them, guys, the jury's out. Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, question from Anthony Wisdom for both of us, Jay. says, Adam and Jay, how far away do you think we are from uh, the likes of City, Liverpool, Madrid, etc.? After watching quarterfinals, it was apparent that we are light years away from competing again with the big boys. I mean, I think I pretty much said that at the top of this show. But, Jay, uh, there, there's the answer. Like, if United want to be United and Jim Radcliffe wants to be true to his word... How long before we get to competing in the last four of the Champions League? Because that is the standard for me. That's the level that Sir Jimmy's talking about. How long do you reckon? Like, how far away are we? Going to Anthony Wisdom's question there. Anthony, great question. Um, so, assuming we make Europa through winning the FA Cup, we're getting six. That's one year gone in Europa. Next season, we got to get top four. That's predicated on the biggest summer transfer signings ever that's two years uh, in a three-year plan so to get Champions League football <coughs> pardon me and be semi-finalists we're talking four or five years four or five I said five I thought it was yeah uh Belfast Man United therapy says I'm sick of people saying it's totally the player's fault the manager picks them and we never see alter uh, alterations in positioning and it's the same performance match after match Eric isn't up to the job fact uh, I understand that I do like the in-game management is enough to send anyone over the top we're not concerned about players leaving we're more concerned about players staying <laughs> yeah David I mean Jay that, that pretty much tells you exactly uh, where we're at like we're more concerned of who actually wants to stay at Manchester United that I don't think that's I don't think I've ever gone into a period in United's history as a fan for as long as I've supported United, where I'm actually not concerned about any players being picked by our so-called rivals. like I used to always feel like Madrid or Barcelona or someone like that trying to lure one of the players away. But like right now, I'm at a place where I actually i am never concerned that anyone is going to leave or be taken away because no one's good enough to be scouted to leave United right now. Yeah, that's actually a great question. Um, how many players would you care about actually staying like we, we we've all um done combined 11s in the past with um mates who are fans of rival clubs i stopped i stopped in combined 11s about three years ago because it was just not pretty point <clears throat> yeah god it's mad, that, isn't it? It really is. MDR Samurai with Super Chat says, it's a structure issue, not a Bruno issue. You can't beat up Rashford for not running, then beat up Bruno for running too much. Eric and our tactics are working at this level. Ajax would be mid-table as well. Uh, thanks for the Super Chat, MDRN. Love that. Cheers, mate. Uh, I agree with Jay on Bruno assessment. I have once said before, Rashford and Bruno are like the bad kids in the class. You need to split them up. Rashford brings out the worst from Bruno. There's a point to that as well. Uh, I'd like to keep Garnacho, Menu, and Hyland. After that, I'm I'm struggling. Speaks volumes for me. Uh, we need to complete a re we need a complete rebuild, uh, incorporating some of the youth players within the next two years or so. Uh, Evans came to keep fit. Uh, this is one, yeah, I think this is pretty much on it. I've just lost the message there. Uh, Evans came to keep fit with the team during pre-season and look at how he has shown his class over these overpaid players. Like, he was an emergency loan signing for a pre-season, Jay. And he's now being classed as one of our best defenders. Oh, it's a sorry state of affairs, isn't it? Yeah, actually, the first show we did uh, last year, you asked me, who's my player of the season thus far? And I said, Johnny <laughs> Evans. <laughs> and I could see uh, a lot of the fans afterwards on, on, on X on Twitter, the thought I'd lost my mind. But uh, like I saw Johnny Evans um, play in Dublin and he literally had Harry Maguire's hand leading him around the pitch. If Johnny Evans 37, we shouldn't have sold Evans in the first place. Mm -hmm. And he's been one of our better defenders. And on Johnny Evans, guys, um, how many of you in the chat would give Johnny Evans... Um, another year's contract just as a backup 
because to Adam's point earlier on in the show, we're already looking at a defender crisis in, in 2025, and the season's not even finished yet, based based on the ins and outs in, in defense. If Maguire and Barrett have to go, so would you keep? Would you give Johnny Evans another year at 38, which he'll be next year? Bear in mind, Paul Mandini played until he was 41. He did okay. Yeah, well, he did. He did, but. I don't think he had to chase around uh, <laughs> lost balls and lost causes as much as what Johnny has and done as much last ditch defending. I just put that question up in a poll there, actually, that Jay just said there. Would you give Johnny Evans another year? Uh, and the early vote uh, is as 82%, 79% is gone to now. It's evening out a little bit, but well over 75%, three quarters, are saying they would give Johnny Evans another year. Jesus Christ, we're keeping a 38-year-old out of sheer desperation, it would seem. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's it, Adam. It's and, and like I like Johnny. I know you like Johnny as well, and we've nothing but respect for Johnny Evans. But giving Johnny a contract as backup out of desperation, because at least with Johnny Evans, you, you know exactly what you're going to get. And that's, mm. that, that's testament to... The, the club right now the sheer desperation i think you can in the head there with, the, with that phrase yeah well as madal says maldini equals johnny uh gabriel says it's funny also uh and embarrassing that our under 18s coming through are way better than most of the first team ask my opinion these guys are the biggest cons in sports they are they are a wage too long a wage for too long i I went around Old Trafford, Jay, and the videos are probably going to be up in short form, so I'm going to ask you right now. Uh, I'm going to roll off the players, what I was asking people on the street at Old Trafford, <clears throat> that are, I would say, more than likely on the hit list to go this summer. So I'm going to read them off to you, Jay. Okay. Uh, and guys in the chat as well, you just get involved in it. Be quick fire with the answers. Just a simple uh, sell or keep, Jay. Are you ready to go? Okay. Yeah, Here go. we go. So, first name, Martial. So, okay, he's gone. He's gone. Yep. Yeah. Donny van der Beek. Gone. Brandon Williams. Gone. Palestre. Gone. Maguire. Gone. Lindelof. Gone. <laughs> Evans. <laughs> Keep. McTominay. Gone. Amrabat. Gone. Rashford. Gone. Casemiro. Uh, gone. Varane. Keep. Aaron Wambazaka. Gone. Luke Shaw. Gone. Ahmad. Keep. Not many, mate. <laughs> and there's more you could add to that as well. But like that was just a list of like like a full team and some subs there, really. Uh, some of them I've not even had in there. You could add Sancho. You could add Greenwood into that as well, like clear and obvious. By the way, guys, the news coming out uh, that Manchester United actually have made some money on Jaden Sancho because he has now triggered a extra loan bonus for qualifying for the semi-finals of the Champions League. So Manchester United actually are not doing too bad out of the loan fees for Jadon Sancho right now. We'll get Jay's thoughts on that in a minute. But Mark Lambridge is in with the super chat. Cheers for that, Mark. Uh, we have to keep some experience at the club. It's one of the biggest problems. We could have zero trophy winners next season at this rate. Like The two big ones, Casemiro and Varane, like, they look like the ones that are trying to be... like pushed out by the club more than any other Jay don't it but I can see where Mark's going with that like the experience factor goes with them too in terms of been there seen it all and actually have experience of winning something yeah listen it's a very valid point the club are looking at the big numbers um we have on 300k and if I'm if I mean I find correct cast is on 350 so mm -hmm. the club is looking at wages there touching what uh, 1.4 million per month that's what almost 50 million pounds a year the club's looking at those big numbers um i lauded casemiro all last season i've given him flowers this season he played well 
but the last couple of games, yeah. I've had to look at the color Casimir. I've, I've had to do it. Um, I can't go hard on the players that I that I dislike. I, I got to be critical on Casimir as well. And the last couple now, now Casimir could rock up now on Sunday. He's playing Coventry and look like prime Casimiro and do the same against Sheffield and Bright and and, and Burnley. But that's Coventry, Sheffield, and Burnley. It's easy for a player by stature to look good against those teams. What do you do at home to Arsenal? Yeah. You know, so Casimir as well, the jury has to be out. But I take your point regarding experience. But thus far, where has the experience got us? We're still in the doldrums. Yeah. And also, the question I'd ask is what well, that, 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 that gentleman, um, these, the, pre, the prima donnas of the club, okay, like take Rashford as, as, as a prime example. Um, he's not benefiting from the experience around him because he thinks that he's he's the most important individual in the entire club he does and we've had other he does he does so i take the point in experience but how many of these players are rising rising to the occasion and listening to the experience of these world-class players like martial and rashford they didn't even want to um benefit from the experience of of ronaldo for god's sake so it's a very it's a very fine line. It's very very tenuous. Do you let experience go or do you keep it around? But the club are looking at the one number, and that is the bottom line finances. Yep. MDRN says I refuse to believe that all these players are so unprofessional that they can't play at this level. We need a manager that has a playing style that works. I mean that list there. There was fifteen players on that list that we just said there that anyone could have picked and chose. And not been too bothered either way, uh, Jay. Like if they left, like no one's losing sleep. But I didn't add to that. Ericsson, I think he's gone. Uh, Sancho, I think he's gone. And Mason Greenwood, I think he's gone. Realistically, Manchester United, I would be surprised if the minimum wasn't a dozen players that left in the summer, Jay. Now that is making a statement. And I think when it comes down to it, I said this to Double A when I was speaking to him the other day. Ineos need to have a statement for summer to get fans on board, I feel, Jay. I think that is important. I think they need to set the precedent. They need to set a standard come this first transfer window. Otherwise, fans will, like we've seen in the chat here, the fans that I've spoken to uh, in and around stadiums, they don't believe in them. They won't believe in them unless they do do something this summer. And do you feel like that's going to force Iran to make some necessary big moves, Jay? I think it is. We discussed in our, in our post match on Saturday that the, uh, Sir Jim and Ineos were kind of in a tipping point moment regarding retaining support the fan base are losing it. And once you lose it, Adam, you know, you don't get it back. So I think unless they host a Hunger Games style cull in the off season, they lose the fan base. Mm-hmm. And that's it. We're done. We literally are done. And it's, it's no matter who the manager is, lose the fan base and we're left with the dross of those players no matter who the manager is next season we're going to be sitting here next april adam having the same conversation yep uh hopefully you are wrong jay but i want to be wrong i i want to be proven wrong please prove me wrong we will see we will see okay guys that is it uh for tonight's show uh you can go and watch probably another english side drop out or maybe two more drop out of european competitions tonight in west ham and liverpool Hopefully, that will be funny. Uh, but guys, uh, we are no one to laugh at. It's all right, us United fans sitting here and laughing at City. I've had a good giggle about it. But a day later, our reality kicks in and we've got the FA Cup this weekend. So let's uh, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We've got our own work to do and hopefully something to salvage in our season. But Jay, I uh, just want to say a massive thank you again for coming on. Absolute pleasure, mate. I uh, listen, lo- lo- love being here and uh, love lo- reading the comments afterwards, interaction from everybody watching. So thanks for having me on, Adam. No worries. Uh, my man, my legend, MDR Samurai, is not letting us go yet, though, because he's just dropped another 10 memberships in, uh, wow. which have been taken by Common Sense, Why to Sleep. <laughs> I like these. Things. Jason, uh, the numbers, Mason, uh, Apreet, uh, Fanood, John, Phil. Uh, what's we got Martin Rickett uh, I think that is everyone yes uh, absolute legend MDRN 
making it a nice round, nice round, 21 members again tonight in the stream. Absolutely love my members, love the mods, love the contributions that everyone puts in on this channel. We are building the best community out there. Uh, and it's a pleasure to bring people like Jay on, Talking Sense, and get involved with you guys in the chat as well. But I'm going to now go and train with the under-17s. I'm going to get wet, so I'm going to try and see how far behind I am. I feel like Johnny Evans right now, actually, going out there doing my bit. But, hey, uh, it's <laughs> we've got to do what we do to stay fit, I suppose. Uh, but, guys, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you give the video a like on the way out. We passed the 150 like mark as well, guys. Thank you to all the Super Chatters. All of your comments, bang on the money. Thank you so much. And I will see you all tomorrow where I will be telling you what is going on this weekend for the Coventry game. Big news. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow.